Hi and welcome to video number two in this three-part series where I talk about proper hand position and proper posture at the piano. If you skip video number one, it is important that you go back and watch that first before you dive into this video. Many times we're just so eager to go, 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 but preparation is the key and setting yourself up properly will make a difference in your learning. Links to video number one and number three are in the description box below. Hey, my name is Kat and welcome to my channel Kat Skis where I share creative piano music videos, piano tutorials, and tips and tools for both piano teachers and students. If you find any of that content valuable, go ahead and click like and subscribe and comment. Your comment will help me grow and understand how to serve you better. Alright, let's talk about how to sit at the piano. Feel free to pause this video to do each task before continuing to the next. As much as I want you to simply just follow the guidelines, I really want you to pause and be aware of what your body is doing and feeling every single time we make an adjustment. Awareness will lead to a better understanding instead of just doing things simply because I said so. So make sure you do each action prompt with me. And parents, I need your help with this. Ask your kids what their body is feeling as they go through each position. First, let's make sure that your piano is set up properly on a flat surface. You cannot sit properly if your piano is not set up properly. If you have an upright piano and a proper keyboard stand, you don't have to worry about this. But I've seen students practice with their keyboards on the bed and they're sitting cross-legged on the bed. Or it's set up on a coffee table that is slow and they're sitting on a couch. Or it's set up too far back into a kitchen table and there's a huge space between them and the piano. The piano must be on a flat surface with the front of the piano all the way to the front side of the desk at the edge. It must be an actual desk and not a coffee table. Now we can address the height. The piano must be around your belly button. So if I take this book right here and I put it towards the edge of the piano and I can tell, I can feel that the uh, book is right by my belly button right here, right? It's connected to my belly button. So that's kind of the right height. Um, some of my students don't have a proper piano stand and that's okay. You can still put your piano on a desk, but if you can, uh, please invest in a proper piano bench. You can get one that's $30 or under. They're not the best quality, but they will do. And it's better to have a proper piano bench than to be sitting on a dining room chair or a couch or the bed. Sometimes those piano benches can be adjusted only to a certain height and you still can't reach the piano. Uh, and don't worry, you can sit on a stack of books, like big books, like phone books if you still have those, or encyclopedias. If you don't have that, you can use a pillow or a cushion temporarily, but it needs to be a temporary fix because the cushions and the pillows can slip underneath you and it just doesn't make it stable for you to sit on it for a long time while you're practicing. For now, use the chair that you usually use during your piano practice at home and your piano lessons. Uh, make sure you do this book test right here, right? Where you, uh, where the book is creating like a straight line from the edge of the piano to your belly button. And for now, don't worry about your legs. If your feet are dangling on the floor for my younger students, uh, don't worry about that. We'll address it in a second. Now let's address how to sit properly on your piano bench or your temporary dining room chair. First of all, I see a lot of this happening where students pull their chair all the way back to the back of their knee pits, which is understandable because this is how you would normally sit on a dining room chair. But we are not normal people. We are piano players, which means we are a different breed and we do things a little bit differently. So go ahead and pull your chair back, right? Instead of uh, going all the way in, I want you to pull your chair back and watch how I am sitting on the front part of my chair. So if you look at my bottom, uh, it is on the front part and it's not all the way to the edge of the back part of the chair. Also, I'm not on the edge. So if you go to the edge, go all the way to the edge of your chair. Notice that when you go to the edge of your chair and if you just move forward and back and you move side to side, I feel a really significant tightness on my hip flexors right here. Uh, the hip flexors are working extra hard to keep me balanced because I'm on the edge of the chair, right? So you can actually put your hands on the hip flexor and just feel how it like tightens up as you go from side to side and uh, side to side and back to back um, when you're sitting at the edge of the chair. Now let's do the reverse of that. And if we sit in the back of our chair, notice that if I'm sitting at the back of the chair and I'm not doing this on purpose, the moment I sit back on the chair, I just naturally go into this slouch position, right? So my back is not straight anymore. My back just naturally goes and relaxes. Also, you can't see my feet right now, but if I sit back towards the back of the chair, 
all of a sudden, I mean, I'm short. Yes, I'm short. But <laughs> I'm sure that it, even if you're tall for my adult students and you sit in the back of your chair, you can still feel like a lightness in your feet, which means that your feet are almost dangling. Mine are definitely dangling. And that's not going to help you become more stable when you play your instrument. Like imagine like it's almost like I'm riding a riding a horse carriage right now <laughs> yeah so you don't want to dangle your feet on the floor and you don't want to relax now stay there so we can feel this uh, position right here in piano you do this movement where you go side to side right and if I stay in the back of my chair and I go side to side go ahead and go side to side right now and now take your hands and put it both on your thighs and as you go side to side you will feel that your quads, your thighs are actually working extra hard to keep yourself balanced. So if I go to the left, this one is working hard, the left side is working hard, and I go to the right, this one is going to tighten up to kind of anchor myself into the chair, and then same thing again, this one tightens up to anchor myself into the chair, and again it tightens up. So your strength is not coming from your core, it's coming from your quads, which you don't really want. Um, you want it to come from your core and you want to feel grounded on the floor. So now let's go back to that proper position where it's at the front part of the chair, but not all the way to the edge. This is where we talk about uh, your feet on the floor. For my younger students who can't quite reach the floor yet, you can grab a set of yoga blocks, one for each foot, right? Or you can grab books or a sturdy box that you can put your feet on so that you can reach the floor, right? So. Um, make sure that it's level, right? That it's even. So don't get like a bigger bo box for your right hand, right leg, and then a smaller box for your left leg. It needs to be the same size so that they're both level on the floor. And then once you're there, think about how uh, there is this slight angle from your hip to your knee. That's slight, like a natural slope down, right? Instead of it being like a 90 degree angle. So we're not on a 90 degree angle with our hip to our knee. It's a little bit of a slope down. And your feet are firmly flat on the floor with your feet literally just right underneath your knee. So it's not tucked underneath and it's not like forward, like you're like lounging, right? The feet are flat on the floor with this again, nice uh, angle sloping down from your hip flexor to your knee. Now, once you find that position, let's go ahead and put our hands on the thigh when we're moving side to side. Notice that even though your thighs are still working, it's not really working as hard anymore. It's not tightening up, it's not gripping, right? So if I move from side to side, the movement is actually more uh, concentrated on your core. It's almost like it forces your core to work harder. It's now we're not in this relaxed position with our core and now we have to compensate with our quads. You're now being, uh, you're now able to sit up straight and with your feet on fl flat on the ground, your quads can be a little bit more relaxed and your energy is coming from your core. You also want to sit at the middle of your chair. So do not be a butt scooter. Yeah, a butt scooter is this. right? Don't be a butt scooter. You don't need to do that. Sit in the middle of your piano, right? When you sit in the middle of your piano, a little clue is it's usually for upright pianos or acoustic pianos. It's usually the name of the piano, the brand name, like right in the middle, you're going to sit right there. Yeah. For digital pianos, it's usually the little screen that you have in the front. That's like the middle of the piano. So you want to sit in the middle of the piano. And then when you reach for the higher and lower parts of the piano, instead of scooting, right, you're going to reach by literally using your core and shifting to the side, right? When you shift to the side, don't compensate for the left hand to go forward like this. You don't want to do this, right? You also don't want to do this on the other side. So your shoulders are always forward your core is shifting to the side and then your right hand and your left hand follows shift to the side your hand follows right so again no more butt scooting now let's talk about how far or how close you're supposed to sit um, by your piano so you don't want to be too far back where your hands are almost straight line right you also don't want to be far too forward where you're literally having this what we call the t-rex arms so you don't want T-Rex arms, right? Because T-Rex can't reach <laughs> for the things that are far away. So um, don't, don't go this close to your, to your piano. 
Another way to test it is by making a fist and punching towards your piano. When you punch towards your piano, make sure that your fist touches or almost touches the front part of your piano. For digital pianos, it would be this front side of the piano. For upright pianos, it would be the board that is uh, going perpendicular from the keys, right? When you punch, don't do this. Extend your punch, right? You want to punch, but your shoulder is still back. So not this punch, but shoulder back. Okay, so that's how you would test it. If you're right there, then you know that you're kind of like at the right distance from the piano. Another way to check is by looking at your knees. Your knees should be just a little bit underneath the piano. So you're not fully in and you're not all the way back here either where your knee is way far away from the piano, right? So check if your knees are just right underneath the piano and that should be the right distance. And the third way to check is by taking your arm and putting it on the piano. If you have this kind of like nice slope from your shoulder down to your hands, you should be at the right position. Um, it should not be in a 90 degree angle. So it's not never really like a 90 degree angle. It's like this nice slope down, right? And it's also not straight, okay? Now that we're at the right height, the right sitting position, and the right distance from the piano, we can do a full body check. Place your arms on the side of your body and just feel how loose and relaxed they are, right? Now when you Take it up, they're nice and loose. It's not like you're gonna take it up and go and do attack the piano, right? We're not attacking the piano, right? We're just gonna take it up and put it on the piano like that, right? Notice how we're sitting up, right? So imagine, I'm wearing a jacket right now, so that's great. Imagine that this is my core and I need to zip it up, right? So I'm zipped up, I'm nice and straight, but I'm also relaxed. I'm not like, Ooh, I need to be straight and I have to play the piano like this though, right? So I'm I'm straight, my body is straight, my back is straight, but I'm nice and relaxed like a good, nice, comfy hoodie that I'm wearing, right? So again, loose arms, back straight, core tight. Those are three things so far. Now let's draw attention to our head. Our head is so heavy. So you really want to make sure that it's nicely balanced um, on our body so we're not like moving forward with it, like so it's not sticking out this way and then it's not sticking out back this way. It's just nicely balanced right on top of your neck. Now let's draw attention to our neck, right? The neck should be nice and loose. Feel free, if you feel any tension when you're playing, feel free to stop and then do some head circles, right? Or maybe just side to side. Maybe like full head circles. You can even go like side to side like this or shoulder to shoulder, right? Just a little stretch, don't overdo it, but just a little stretch to remind your neck that, hey, you can relax, neck. You don't need to work as hard, yeah? So again, we have the arms, that's number one. Number two, we have our core, Let's make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, number three, we have our back, we're sitting out straight. Number four, we have our head that is nicely well balanced to our body. And our neck, number five is our neck, which is nice and relaxed. Kind of like Stevie Wonder. So the best way to start is just by letting your hand nice and loose on the side and then from there feeling the energy come from your collarbone because remember it's not actually the arms that lift up it's the collarbone it's the energy from the collarbone that lifts up and puts your hands on the piano so relax feel the energy flow from your collarbone and hands on the piano so again how is this all going to work together when I'm playing the piano, I am never in the same position the whole time. Sure, I'm relaxed, but even if I'm relaxed, it's not like I'm here. I'm relaxed, but my body is just kind of like stationary in the same position. Once you've learned your pieces and you feel a lot more comfortable, you can put more expression to it. And a lot of times when I play, uh, my body is really fluid. It goes forward, it goes back, it goes in circles. Like, depending on the tone that I want, So again, my body is fluid. And how does that all work? Well, the core is really the initiator of everything. So it's kind of like a snake. Have you ever seen a video of dancing snakes where there's a person playing the flute and the kind of the snake comes around, right? It's initiated by the core, 
and then the whole body moves and the head follows initiated by the core whole body moves head follows initiated by the core whole body moves head follows right so again if i'm going notice how it's my core that moves first and my head follows right so ba -da 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 -da. So yeah, think about that movement, right? Uh, are you gonna get it all in one day? Well, probably not, but it's the art of practice, yeah? We just practice it over and over again and we're becoming more conscious of it as we practice and it will come as we do it more. Well, that's it for our second video in this three-part series. Uh, we've talked about almost every single part of our body except for our hands, which is another important part in playing the piano. So that will be video number three in this three-part series. Remember that if you skip video number one to go back and watch video number one. Thanks for watching and if you haven't yet, go ahead and click like and subscribe and I'll see you in video number three.